am I doing diving a submersible into a fucking active submarine volcano? Meet Terry Kirby, the first man to dive into Hawaii's Loihi volcano back in 1987, when there was no map to follow, no best practices to avoid getting buried by eruption debris or crushed beneath unstable lava shelves, and the volcano itself wasn't yet discovered. About 13,000 feet from its base, this volcano is unlike the other Hawaiian islands, so let's dive into it. In this video, we're going to look at the crazy journey of Terry Kirby underwater discovering the terrifying submarine volcano in Hawaii, so stick around, and we'll also be giving away this Hawaii volcano poster, so stick around to the end of the video to see how you could win. Before starting the discovery story, let me first tell you about this volcano, Loihi the submarine volcano that is currently building itself into Hawaii's next island. It rises about 13,000 feet from its base to its summit, which lies nearly a mile beneath the ocean's surface. Like the other Hawaiian islands, Loihi was created by a hotspot, a plume of magma welling beneath the seafloor and eventually bursting through. In July 2021, the Hawaiian Board on Geographic Names officially renamed the volcano Kamaehuakanaloa. It's the handiwork of Pele, goddess of volcanoes and fire, one of the fiercest and most revered deities in the Hawaiian culture. At 400,000 years old, Loihi is her youngest child, a little sister sitting at the feet of Mauna Loa, the world's largest volcano, Kilauea, one of the world's most active volcanoes, and Mauna Kea, another mammoth volcano that ranks as the world's tallest mountain, if you measure it from the seafloor. Scientists don't know exactly when Loihi will grow tall enough to poke its head above the waves, maybe a hundred thousand years from now, maybe more, maybe less. I did my first dive on Loihi in 1987, and I'm dropping down there in Pisces Vi going, what am I doing diving on an active submarine volcano? Terry Kirby said, which is the operations director and chief pilot of the Pisces R4 and Pisces 5, hurls two deep sea submersibles. He had spent thousands of hours roving the Pacific depths. No one knew if this was a good idea. There was no map to follow, no best practices to avoid getting buried by eruption debris or crushed beneath unstable lava shelves. Live undersea volcanoes are uneasy places, and Kirby was aware that he needed to approach this one with caution. The submersible sank into the darkness on its white-knuckle reconnaissance, drifting down and down until it reached Loihi's highest point, which would later become known as Pisces Peak. Trimming the sub, Kirby began to orient himself. He could see mounds of black pillow lava and rust-colored mineral deposits that signaled the presence of iron and strands of bacteria waving lazily in the current. Jumbles of rocks glistened with volcanic glass. It was a landscape of stark Plutonian beauty. Suddenly, an immense pinnacle reared up in his viewport. It had to be a hundred feet tall. Chimneys sprouted from its sides, pumping translucent fluid. Kirby knew what to call the strange formation, a hydrothermal vent system, but vents had been discovered only a decade earlier on the Galapagos's deep seafloor. Scientists were just beginning to study them and marvel at their weirdness. Like hot springs on land, hydrothermal vents pop up in volcanically active areas, roiling out a mix of seawater, minerals, gases, and microbes from the Earth's superheated plumbing. When this brew hits the cold, deep water, it precipitates minerals that form chimneys of various heights. Kirby named the giant looming before him Pele's Vent. At that moment, it seemed prudent to pay her some respect. After that first dive, scientists kept clamoring to return, and Kirby became familiar with Loihi's twisted gray-green chimneys and spooky ochre yellow rocks. Its rubble-strewn craters streaked with something that looked like dried blood. There were uncommon animals down there too. Kirby regularly ran into a toad-like fish called Sladenia a remiger that squatted on the rocks with fins that resembled feet. It's a member of the anglerfish family and so awful looking that it's cute. Steel blue eels would zip by the viewports. These were cinefer branchids, nicknamed cutthroat eels because their gill slits are slashed across their necks. Kirby also encountered chimeras, or ghost sharks, primitive cartilaginous fish with big heads, pointy snouts, fins like airplane wings, long trailing tails, and shiny silver dollar eyes. A sensory network of lateral lines curve around the chimeras' bodies, making them look as though they've been stitched together or assembled from jigsaw puzzle pieces. Sometimes a false cat shark would swish by like a runway model, sporting the elongated eyes of a grey alien and a wide jack-o'-lantern grin. It's one of the many deep-sea shark species that we barely know, because they wisely spend their lives as far from us as they can possibly get. On one memorable dive, the Pisces subs were greeted by a Pacific sleeper shark, a thick-bodied deep dweller with mottled skin and a buzzsaw mouth. It's closely related to the Greenland shark, the Earth's longest-lived vertebrate, with a lifespan that can top 400 years. 
Researchers once thought they were the same species. Pacific sleeper sharks are covert creatures, hefty as great whites and the only predators besides sperm whales that are known to hunt giant squid. In 1996, the seafloor around Loihi rattled with a swarm of 4,000 earthquakes, the largest seismic event ever recorded in Hawaii. Nobody had any idea what was happening, Kirby recalled, raising his eyebrows for emphasis. It just sounded like something major was going on. A Pisces expedition was quickly mounted. Descending into a deep sea eruption is not on the average person's to-do list, but this was an event scientists couldn't afford to miss. That didn't mean it wasn't wildly dangerous. Submarine volcanoes don't always present themselves politely. During one notorious tantrum in September 1952, the US Navy's deep-sea hydrophones detected a series of loud explosions in the Pacific Ocean, 230 miles south of Tokyo. It was a known spot for frisky tectonics, part of a longer arc at the seam where two oceanic plates collide. Active volcanoes had been charted on the nearby seafloor. Over the next week, the blasts continued, becoming so convulsive they generated multiple tsunamis. Often these outbursts were accompanied by thunder and lightning that lasted for hours. Great sparks rose into the sky, one fisherman noted. Someone else called in a pillar of fire. Marine observers watched a 200-foot dome of water swell up on the surface like a colossal bubble, its edges running with waterfalls. They heard roaring and moaning noises that seemed to come from the ocean itself, which had turned a sickly green color and was puking up dead fish. When US Air Force pilots flew over the site, they saw spiky black rocks emerge in a boil of white water and then sink back into the depths. For marine geologists, this was blockbuster stuff. So when the explosion stopped, momentarily as it turned out, a group of 31 Japanese scientists and crew motored out on a research ship, the Kayomaru 5, to document the action firsthand. We'll never know what they witnessed that day, for the ship was never seen again. A few days later, scraps of it were found floating nearby. The wreckage was shot through with lava shrapnel. It's hard to imagine the force that's needed to propel hundreds of tons of volcanic mayhem upward through a mile of water, but it's safe to say that you don't want to be near it in a submersible, and the Hawaiian Islands have hosted a lot of turbulent rocks. On a wall outside Kirby's office, a bathymetric map of Hawaii that revealed vast debris fields on the seafloor. Rocks the size of bungalows, buildings, and city blocks had, at some point, careened across 38,000 square miles of submarine real estate, an area five times larger than the combined land mass of the islands. I felt humbled by the sight of the map because I knew what it meant. Monumental violence had occurred here in the past, when the volcanoes rose to a point where they shuddered and partially collapsed, generating mighty submarine landslides. Some of the slides would have caused mega tsunamis, which explains why coral fragments have been found high on the slopes of the big island. During a massive earthquake swarm, anyone familiar with this submerged carnage would have instantly wondered, was Loihi shifting and sliding and shedding its skin in that same way now? It was nerve-wracking, Kirby confirmed. We got out to the site and there was still activity coming off the bottom. The ship was getting hit with these shock waves, just bang. I was supposed to go down there to see what was going on. He laughed. I never would have done a dive like that if I hadn't been exploring that volcano for nine years already. Kirby descended in the Pisces 5, easing the sub down warily. The water in the depths was turbid, and it gave off an unsettling, almost electric vibe. Visibility worsened. I worked my way up to where Pelly's vent should have been. We came to the edge of this huge drop, and we just sat there staring at it. It took a moment to grasp what had happened. Pelly's vent was gone. In its place was a thousand-foot-deep crater. The volcano's magma reservoir, its molten heart, had drained, flowing down the rift zone and causing the peak to implode. Later, scientists would discover vent fluids emitting from the new pit crater at temperatures up to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Creeping forward, Kirby dropped into the maw. It got to the point where I couldn't see anything. Orange bacterial flock and white flecks of sediment whirled around the sub like a blizzard. On his sonar, Kirby saw that the Pisces had flown parallel close to the crater's wall. He reversed with one of the thrusters, triggering an avalanche of loose rock. The thruster started all this stuff moving, so I got out of there, Kirby said with a grin. After that, I was completely addicted to volcano diving. And that's the end of today's story, the nerve-wracking dive to an active submarine volcano. Now time for the giveaway. We're giving away this Hawaii volcano poster that is going to be shipped to your location anywhere in the world. To participate, simply leave a comment down below telling us what do you think of this story. We're excited to hear about your top picks. Once you've commented, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and have notifications turned on so you won't miss out on any future giveaways or videos from us. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. The winner will be randomly selected and announced in the comments section of our next video, so stay tuned for that. If you're the lucky winner, we'll get in touch with you directly to arrange the shipping. Also, if you would like to buy the poster, you can simply visit my store on the link below. Good luck everyone, and we can't wait to read your comments. From everyone here, thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep the passion alive. Until the next video, take care and see you soon.